Okay, let's welcome back to uh, Distributed Systems Lecture. Our next topic will be about um, clock synchronization. So, don't think about your watch. It won't have to be something with your watches, but with computers. And before I introduce clock synchronization to you, uh, let me introduce the roots of clock synchronization and a very, very important man in that field. So first of all, clock synchronization started in the 70s. So for those of you who don't know the 70s, so people look pretty much like this. <laughs> Trains looked like that. Yeah. And also cars had been somehow funny. Mm -hmm. So in the 70s, a man named Leslie Lamport, who is the 2013 Turing Award winner, um, reasoned a lot about synchronization in computerized systems. So real short, briefly about Leslie Lamport, he did his bachelor thesis in 1960, 1963, he uh, received a master's degree in math and in 1972 he um, received his PhD about the topic which is called Singularities in Analytic Partial Differential Equations. If you ask me, sounds pretty boring, does it? Uh, but he really made a lot of interesting observations and he developed a lot of very, very important algorithms. Just as uh, the Bakery algorithm, the Lamport algorithm or the Lamport signature. And all of these uh, observations, he basically, or the majority of them, he made them in the 70s. So, as I said, the, the 70s looked a bit different than today so did basically computerized systems. So this is what was called the DARPA net and basically um, technology uh, created it in the 70s and today we know it as the internet. So in the 70s you could get the whole internet on one slide So because <laughs> these are all the machines which had been connected within that time and yeah you know not only that it was so less nodes it's also the computers had been much bigger and the computing power was less than your smartphone probably is today and oh sorry wrong direction and today the internet more or less looks like the universe so a lot more computing nodes and a lot more powerful computing nodes so you may wonder hmm those observations from Leslie Lamport for um, more than 40 years ago are they still valid or do they create value to us so as I said he reasoned a lot about clock synchronization and what we call the relationship of happened before so this really is important to us in a today's business world. Why? Easy to say, so let's just observe some application we can uh, use on the internet, just as airplane booking. We all used it when we came here to Washington. So let's come up with a more specific scenario. Let's say, let's say Martin, Martin and me, we are competing for the last very cheap seat on a specific flight. So now I open my browser, I'm looking around a bit, checking out my alternatives, Martin does basically the same, but we're all looking for the same very specific seat on a Lufthansa flight, for instance. And of course only one of us can get this flight, right? Or this seat, this very specific seat. So let's see, now Martin is create, or wants to create his booking, so it's in the whole process of creating it. I'm too. And now what should happen? So 
you can easily say, okay, either he clicked first, I want to have it, or it was me. So in this very specific situation, it is either important to have some additional mechanism, so the airline won't care, maybe sells it to the same price, or we have really to decide which one of us was first. So how to decide which one was first? We need to have the systems in the back, so the whole internet, exchange a lot of messages and to distinguish if I or he was first. And that will basically lead us to Lamport's logical clocks, which pretty much looks somehow like this. And this will be the topic which I will explain next to you. So far as a quick introduction, close this uh, short um, <laughs> essay with my uh, favorable remark from Leslie Lamport tells you basically one system shuts down and you're messed up in a distributed system. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay.